Guys, I'm so excited to let you know that this episode, literally the episode that I'm editing right now, is being sponsored by NordVPN, which means that if you go to nordvpn.com slash YBOC, you can actually get 70% off a three-year deal, which means it's only $3.49 per month. And if you type in the code YBOC to check out, you get another month for free! Oh, uh, hey there, nerds. My name is Dr. Jordan Breeding, and I uh, insert a joke about my name or my life here. I'll just do it in post. Oh, uh, yeah, in high school I was forced to wrestle a girl and it was way less magical and way more sweaty than my dad said it would be. Uh, poignant. Anyway, you're watching Your Brain on Crack. The show's still committed to the doctor thing even as the fourth wall crumbles in front of me and the only show on Crack with a very loose format. Today I introduce... We've come a long way since the early genres of classic film which were basically watch me electrocute this elephant and oh a train? We have all kinds of stuff from biopics to young adult sci fi to Liam Neeson and oh, the train! The seat taken. With so many genres flooding the market, it's easy to miss the real crazy stuff. But the good news is that, unlike you, nothing gets by me because I'm an actual doctor and I have a lot of free time. In the same way that American Hollywood continually cast Rock the Dwayne Johnson, Mexico produced a horde of films starring their own famous wrestlers. So yeah, I'm talking about luchadors just throwing down against every conceivable otherworldly threat from aliens to extremely not safe for work vampires to whatever the hell this is. The most famous film like Luchador, El Santo, personally starred in nearly 50 films that inexplicably required an overweight man in a mask to get in there and save everybody. One such film, Champions of Justice, is a sordid tale about an evil doctor who builds a machine that turns regular little people into super strong wrestling little people. And to stop this horrifying development, obviously they had to get five luchadors together to just get the crap beaten out of them by dwarves. In Santo Contra el Cerebro del Mal, Santo is brainwashed into an unwilling minion of Dr. Campos. Think Hawkeye and Avengers, but you know, if he actually bothered to wear a mask. And to break the curse, another luchador pounds Santo in the face until his brain is no longer malo, and then together they go kill a bunch of gangsters. This is what's known as the perfect script. Then, in a decidedly sexy turn for the genre, the movie Operacion 67 capitalizes on James Bond's popularity by recasting the suave British spy as a masked Mexican wrestler. And the hero never removes his signature silver mask because, quote, doing so would shame all other men. Oh yeah, and there's also Neutron the Atomic Superman versus the Death Robots, which you wouldn't think it, but it's got layers. It's just stacked. I'm just a man who believes in the triumph of justice and who goes after it in a rather unorthodox way. Eventually, the luchadors had conquered all evil in the known galaxy and the genre just kind of petered out. And also, I guess nobody wanted to watch El Santo versus Weakening Eyesight and the doctor who says you should probably stop clotheslining people for the sake of his aging heart. <laughs> For decades, Uganda was ruled by the vicious Idi Amin. The Ugandan film industry, Wakaliwood, deals with this horrific past directly in their films. According to Ugandan director Isaac Nabwana, being that Idi Amin killed people, we also have to kill people to rub off that bad image. That doesn't sound right, but ooh, explosions! <laughs> A few years ago, Wakali well, Hollywood gained some internet infamy with the viral hit Who Killed Captain Alex and its hilariously low quality CGI. Oh, oh, oh. That was just the start. In another movie, self proclaimed Ebola hunters try to stomp out Ebola in the developing world by shooting and kicking things to death. What? What was that called? Oh, that's right, thank you. No, no, I get it. I get it. Okay, I'm moving on! Then there's another movie that claims to be the Ugandan Expendables, but honestly, compared to Stallone's version, it's kind of way better. Ugandan Expendables! On coming soon! The movies are all insane, obviously, but what's truly refreshing about Hollywood is how nobody's under the impression that they're making high art, they just want to make action movies. Arguably, the best part is how when these movies are shown in Ugandan theaters, they're often presented by a video jockey, and this MC talks over the entire movie, yelling things like, quote, Now expect the unexpectable, and action is coming, I promise you, which I'm pretty sure are both taglines for the upcoming Snyder Cut. 
Every showing is basically this live Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode wherein the audience and MC are riffing on a film that was only ever intended to be riffed on. It's basically a genre tailor made for you and your stone friends who love to yell over absurd films in your mom's basement. It's perfect. And they've got a Patreon you should absolutely support because unlike a typical Hollywood production that uses audience money to pay for sexual harassment lawyers, money donated to a Hollywood covers stuff like an Adobe Premiere license and freaking electricity. And besides, how many Marvel movies feature a post-crucifixion Jesus with a rocket launcher? There is an embarrassingly long section of American entertainment history where Native Americans were only ever seen as savage villains. Also real history. You got him, buddy. <laughs> Eventually movies became more sympathetic, but there was this weird period in between where filmmakers realized they'd overworked the natives are evil angle, but directors still couldn't imagine one like working at a restaurant or shopping at Whole Foods because, you know, they're always wearing war paint and have ornamental headdresses, right? Anyway, that confusion birthed a new genre called red exploitation. Now, your typical red exploitation film features white people portraying Indians killing white people portraying white people, and usually an abused Native American protagonist gets revenge with endless scalping and tomahawking in the goriest, most stomach-turning ways possible. It's basically Inglorious Bastards, but without all that subtlety. For example, in the not quite classic Thunder Warrior trilogy, the titular Thunder returns home from a long absence only to discover that construction workers are tearing up his ancestral burial ground to build an observatory, because you know how astronomers are always being so culturally insensitive. The construction going on there is illegal and sacrilegious. Thunder tries to defuse the situation with words, but the construction workers just laugh him off. So instead, he just breaks into a store, walks right past the guns, grabs a big ass crossbow, and murders everybody for three straight movies. Like Rambo, but you know. Better hair. In Scalps, a group of archaeology students goes digging around in obviously Indian burial grounds because where else would you dig? People died here. And a student gets possessed by a murderous spirit named Black Claw. But the genre's apex arrived with the Billy Jack movies, which stars a very white Tom Laughlin as a half Native American Vietnam vet Hapkido expert who also happens to be a pacifist. You know what I think I'm gonna do then? Just for the hell of it. Tell me. I'm gonna take this right foot and I'm gonna whop you. Well, okay, so apparently Billy Jack is about as much pacifist as he is a Native American. Kill that Indian son of a <laughs> This ludicrous genre died out sometime in the 90s when everyone outside of Cleveland, Washington, D.C., and Stephen Seagal's entourage finally acknowledged, yeah, Native Americans probably aren't all mystical warriors secretly hoping to get revenge on small town America. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what the hell is that? I'm out of there, god! Yeah, I'm out of there. Uh yeah, so a few years ago, a guy with hands named Guy Hands made a real movie called Crust about a probably not real shrimp who took up boxing. Now the whole thing was this insane attempt to create a movie that would intentionally fail so that he could recover the money in a tax avoidance tax relief scheme, a la the producers. And the movie did fail, but it did also become a sensation in Japan because of course it did. <laughs> and as such, several spin-off Sea Life sports films came out like The Calamari Wrestler and Crab Goalkeeper, which it's probably something that David Beckham would catch on a work trip. <laughs> and they're all kind of air bud with a man in a massive crustacean outfit instead of a real dog, and it's hard to find a ton of info on this genre because I live in stupid America where nobody dresses up like sea creatures anymore. But if you find anything, please tell me about it because I must see more for my, for my science. <laughs> yeah, so if somebody wanted to do more research on these Sea Life sports films, the best way to do it would definitely be with a NordVPN account. All I had to do was download the app from the Mac Store, install it, pick a country of origin, connect to one of NordVPN's thousands of super fast servers spread out all over the globe, and voila! 
All of a sudden, I'm searching Netflix Japan for that real weird stuff I can't get in the States. And even better, while researching this video, I kept noticing different countries have all sorts of extra shows and additional seasons of stuff like Fargo, Rick and Morty, Atlanta, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. My wife and I don't have cable, and since we're quarantined, we're ripping through content at an incredible rate. And we finally caught up on Better Call Saul, but we were sad to see that season five wouldn't be out on Netflix for a full year. We actually considered buying it on Amazon like a couple of Neanderthals, but with NordVPN, it's right there. Like, look at it. I can click it and watch Saul Goodman make a mess of our legal system. No, this is for so much cheaper than forking over a bunch of money to own a show that I don't have the emotional stamina to watch more than once. And all you gotta do is go to nordvpn.com slash YBOC to start your Better Call Saul tentacle fantasies today. And even better, all of this is backed by a top cybersecurity firm and they don't track what you do, so the tentacle stuff can be between you and Bob Odenkirk and the squid. Okay, I don't feel great. Let's just, uh, let's bring her home. Uh, yeah, discuss what Michael Jordan would probably look like as a dead guy, uh, subtly laid the foundations for Nacho Libre 2, and have confirmed that I ate way too much sushi earlier, so I think that's it. Uh, make sure to check with Kathy on your way out for some drugs for your tangentially related disease goes here. Oh, crap, 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 crap! You got syphilis! <laughs>